Hello everyone, here is my no fluff walkthrough of the no calculator section of practice test number five. Number one, which of the following is the equation of line L in xy plane above? So it's gonna be y equals something x plus something. Let's start with the intercept that hits at plus one. So we're gonna have a plus one there. The slope, we go one up, one right, one over one is just one or x. So our answer is y equals x plus one. And that's going to be D. Question two, the circle above with center O has a circumference of 36. What is the length of minor arc AC? So that's gonna be this arc here. And we know that's a fourth because these are all right angles making up one fourth of this pizza pie. So it's gonna be 36 divided by four, which is nine, and that's A. Number three, what are the solutions to this quadratic equation? The first thing I'm gonna do is reduce everything by a factor of four. We can just get rid of that. So divide the whole thing by four on this side and this side. That would give us X squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Now to factor this, I need two numbers that add to this one, multiply to that. It's going to be x, let's see, ba -ba, minus 3 and x plus 1. Negative 3 times 1, negative 3. Negative 3 plus 1, negative 2. That works. Our answers are going to be 3 and negative 1. And that's going to be da -da -da -da, Answer B. Number four, which of the following is an example of a function whose graph in the xy plane has no x-intercept? So that means we draw the xy plane, it doesn't hit this horizontal line here. Linear function whose rate of change is not zero, so that means it would be something like this. That would hit zero, so not that. Quadratic function with real zeros, a zero is where it hits that axis, so it's not that. A quadratic function with no real zero, so it means it doesn't touch the horizontal x-axis, it's going to be c. Question 5. In the equation above, k is a constant. If x equals 9, what is the value of k? So it's going to be root k plus 2 minus 9 equals 0. So root k plus 2 equals 9. I'll square both sides. We get k plus 2 equals 81. Subtract 2 from both sides, and we get k equals 79. So our answer is D. Number six, which of the following is equivalent to the sum of the expressions a squared minus one and a plus one? So we're just adding these together. So it's gonna be a squared minus one plus a plus one, minus one and plus one cancel. So we get a squared plus a. Answer is A. Number seven, Jackie has two summer jobs. She works as a tutor, which pays $12 per hour, and she works as a lifeguard, which pays $9.50 an hour. She can work no more than 20 hours per week, but she wants to earn at least 220 per week. Which of the following systems of inequalities represents the situation in terms of X and Y, where X is the number of hours she tutors and Y is the number of hours she works as a lifeguard? So let's do the pay first. So tutoring is 12 an hour, so it'll be 12X, plus lifeguarding is 9.50 an hour, 9.5 Y, and she wants to earn at least 220. So at least means more than or equal to. So more than or equal to 220. So that's equation one. So it's not that one. And it's not that one. Equation number two, it's just going to be x plus y, so the hours at each. And she wants to work no more than 20 hours. So 20 hours or less. So less than or equal to 20. And that's going to be answer C. Number eight, in air, the speed of sound S in meters per second is a linear function of the air temperature T in degrees Celsius and is given by S of T equals 0.6 T plus 331.4. Which of the following statements is the best interpretation of the number 331.4 in this context? So this number is the y-intercept, so that means where it starts. So let's look for the one where it starts or where it is at zero. The speed of sound in meters per second at zero, so it's A. Number nine, if x, y is a solution of the systems of equations above and x is greater than zero, what is the value of x, y? First thing I notice is they just tell us y equals x squared. So we can plug that in for y here and solve for x. So let's do two x squared plus six equals, and I'll distribute this, two x plus six. Six is cancel, I'll subtract two x from both sides, and we get two x squared minus 2x equals 0. I'll factor out an x, get x times 2x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals 0, but they want the one that's greater than 0, so let's use this one. And we get 2x equals 2, when I just add 2 to both sides. So x equals 1. So we know x is 1, and using this original equation, if x is 1, so 1 squared, y would just be 1, so 1 times 1 for x, y, answer is a. Number 10, if a squared plus b squared equals z and a, b equals y, which of the following is equivalent to 4z plus 8y? So z is a squared plus b squared, so we'd have 4 times a squared plus b squared, and a, b is y, so 8y would be plus 8ab. 
and we'd simplify that, we get 4a squared plus 4b squared plus 8ab. And this is looking like the form of when you multiply out a squared expression, which we see here, they give us all these examples of squared expressions, but which one is it? So if I rewrite this, it looks a little more familiar, right as 4a squared plus 8ab plus 4b squared. So we should have 2a plus 2b squared, because it would yield this format. And you should get used to this kind of format on the test. It would help you speed up problems like this one. So it's going to be 2a plus 2b squared. If you didn't know that, you can just test these out and see which one gives you this formula here. So that's going to be B. Number 11, the volume of a right circular cylinder A is 22 cubic centimeters. I'll draw that out. That's 22 centimeters. What is the volume in cubic centimeters of a right circular cylinder with twice the radius and half the height of a cylinder? So the formula for a cylinder is V equals pi r squared h. You basically get the area of the circle and then bring it up with the height. So it says with twice the radius, so if we multiply the radius by two, that's gonna go up by a factor of four. And I know that because if I try it out with one, say it's V equals pi one squared times one, V is one. But if I double it to two, V equals pi two squared plus, or sorry, times one, it'd be V equals four. So we know that goes up by a factor of four. And then half the height, this is just a straight ratio. So half of this is gonna be times one half. So we know overall the factor is gonna be times two. Four times one half is two. So 22 times two is 44, answer is C. Number 12, which the following is equivalent to nine to the three fourths. So I would write that as nine to the third root four. And I see that's not an answer in A or B, so it can't be those. So we're gonna have to write it in terms of three. So nine is just three squared. So it'll be three squared raised to the three fourths. And the power rule with exponents, if we raise a power to a power, we multiply them. So it'll be three to the six fourths which is three to the three over two. Writing that in more traditional form would be three cubed root two. So three cubed is three times three times three. And because we're looking for a square root three times three, we can pull out that three and we get three root three. Our answer is D. Number 13, at a restaurant, N cups of tea are made by adding T tea bags to hot water. If T equals N plus two, how many additional tea bags are needed to make each additional cup of tea? So T are tea bags and our cups of tea. So we just want to rewrite this equation in terms of N. So if I subtract two from both sides, it would become N equals T minus two. The slope is just one because it's one T, so our answer is B, one. Number 14, this is a big one, so some of the answers are off screen. The function F is defined by the equation above. Which of the following is the graph of Y equals negative F of X? So basically just whatever I put into this and the answer I get, I make it negative. So F of X equals negative two to the X plus one. And I just like to test out points for these and I always start with the easiest point, which is zero. So F of zero would equal negative two to the zero plus one. Two to the zero would be one, one plus one is two. So we get negative two. So we get zero, negative two. Let's look for that point. Not A, not B, C's got it, D does not, so it's gotta be C. Number 15, Allen drives an average of 100 miles each week. His car can travel an average of 25 miles per gallon of gasoline. Allen would like to reduce his weekly expenditure on gasoline by $5. Assuming gas costs $4 per gallon, which equation can Alan use to determine how many fewer average miles M he should drive each week? So the cost of driving one mile is gonna be four over 25, and then how many fewer miles M, so M is miles, so times M. So this is the cost per how many miles he drives, and he wants to spend $5 less, so we're gonna see when this equals five. So that's gonna be choice D. Number 16, Maria plans to rent a boat. The boat rental costs $60 per hour, and she will also have to pay for a water safety course that costs $10. Maria wants to spend no more than $280 for the rental. If the boat rental is available for a whole number of hours only, what is the maximum number of hours which Maria can rent the boat? So our equation is gonna be, we have $60 per hour, so 60X, she pays a $10 course once, that's the intercept, plus 10. And we want it to be less than or equal to, because she wants to pay no more than 280. So let's solve this. So you have 60X is less than or equal to 270. 270 divided by 60, zero, zero, and it's about four. We don't need to know the decimals, but it's only in whole hours, so the answer is four. 17, what value of P is a solution to the equation above? So two P plus two, 
plus 8p minus 8, I just distributed the numbers, equals 5p. Combine like terms, 10p minus 6 equals 5p. So we would get minus 5p minus 5p. 5p equals, at 6 to both sides, 6. And that would be p equals 6 fifths. Number 18, the system of equations above has solution x, y. What is the value of x? So again, I see y equals 2x. We can plug that right in for y. So 1 half times 2x plus 2x equals 21 over 2. Multiply both sides by 2 to cancel out these fractions. We get 2x plus 2x equals 21. 4x equals 21, so x is going to equal 21 over 4. Second to last question, number 19. The expression above is equivalent to this, where a is a positive constant and x does not equal negative 2. What is the value of a? So first thing I notice, we have x plus 2 squared. x plus 2 squared, and this one is x plus 2. So to make these all have a common denominator, I just need to multiply this one by x plus 2. That would be 2x plus 6 over x plus 2 squared minus times x plus 2 on the top and bottom would give us 2x plus 2 over x plus 2 squared and that equals a over x plus 2 squared. So now these are all on a common denominator so I can just ignore this part. So that's going to be 2x plus 6 minus, distribute this, 2x plus 4 equals a. So 2x plus 6 minus 2x minus 4 equals a. 2x minus 2x cancel. 6 minus 4 is 2, so 2 equals a. Last question, number 20. Intersecting lines R, S, and T are shown below. What is the value of x? So first, I would find this angle here. These two add up to 180 because it's a straight line. So 180 minus 106, that would give us 74. And then we can use the external angle theorem. We know the angle on the outside equals the two opposite angles together. So x equals 74 plus 23. So x equals 97. I hope this video helped you review the practice test. If it did, please give it a like, and I'll see you next time.